I had a very, very long innings. I was uh, one of the f first batch of uh, trained architects at, in, in Pakistan. Uh, when College of Arts started, I started with it and I studied there for five years. Uh, and after that, I started teaching. But my teaching career was not long. After that, I started uh, my uh, working with, uh, with an engineer in an uh, architectural firm. And uh, since then, I've been uh, constantly practicing. The biggest challenge was to, you know, the challenge, uh, I suppose it's universal for everybody in the creative field, particularly architecture, the challenge is to produce a good, good building which is an enormously difficult job because out of 100 buildings you go in on a street and count 100 buildings. If one building is nice, it's a great percentage. So we constantly produce bad buildings and the challenge to produce a reasonable building, a good building, is enormous because it, we, we're not as lucky as the painters I like painting, a few paintings are hanging in the wall as well. I'm a very happy man doing my drawings. But when it comes to producing the work of architecture, then you have to work with multiple types of people. You have to work with the owners, you have to work with the contractors, you have to work with the engineers. So with all this team, you have to weave your way to uh, a reasonable result which is so zigzag and so complicated that uh, I get frustrated halfway, you know, because out of owners we have problems of bad taste, contractors are incom incompetent and corrupt, engineers uh, also we have a, a lot of difficulty going along with them. So that's what makes this uh, profession complex and that is uh, what makes your passage intricate. One is that uh, I designed a house for my teacher Shakir Ali and I designed a staircase uh, for him which was going nowhere, very funny, strange sort of a thing that he wanted. But when it got finished it was so beautiful that he uh, uh, delighted and gave me a painting as a, as a prize and that painting I own today. I've been offered 80 lakhs for it and I'm not selling it. You see, that was a moment that I remember very well. And they're both in a mess. <laughs> see, uh, not balanced at all, that's the problem. But anyway, uh, architect, uh, any challenging creative work is, is, is great fun as well. You know, the challenges keep you going. You keep on, uh, you know. Uh, there are no dull moments. There may be frustrating moments, but uh, no dull moments, you can say. It's, it's quite fascinating, actually the challenges in uh, furnishings and interior design and that uh, you are in a globalized position where you in modern times with all the media and with all the information and internet available anything and everything is in front of your eyes you on a click you can get the italian scene or the, or the british scene uh, of creativity and that's a great facility. And at the same time, you have your challenges which are on ground challenges, indigenous challenges, the regional challenges of the place. So you as a designer or as an architect or, or as people involved with furnishing have a challenge. That is that uh, you have to balance between, if you just import things from China which is sad thing which is going on in uh, all over the industry. Uh, it's, uh, I, I think it's no good. Or at the same time, you're doing old-fashioned jobs which are 
creating furniture of chinoot and all this that on the other side is the other extreme so uh, the challenge is uh, the challenge is, uh, is to balance out that you have to do justice with your space and time the timing that you you exist now and also um, do work which is which has an identity it is not taken off from magazines of italy and uh, it is a work that you can say that you have produced as a solution to demands and problems and available materials of of the place which is your station with the karachi or lahore pakistan in india i think uh, uh, it is uh, uh, it is a sort of a search that you have to launch around you to do appropriate work in your field for that uh, you have to keep your freedom you keep your minds open instead of following just one uh, uh, myopic sort of a school of thought uh, of whether it comes from your training in the college or in the, what you see in the trends in the market you, you have to you keep your minds open and absorb great things from the international scene and try to absorb good things from your own uh, heritage and your own uh, 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 treasure of your past whatever is uh, appropriate applicable but for that you need to 